Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. It isn't luck that this home burned down and this home didn't. The difference is being firewise. Use non combustible roofing. Screen your attic and eave vents. Create a three foot area around your house with fire resistant vegetation or rock gardens. Remove tall grass and spruce trees within 15 feet and keep firewood 30 feet away. Take the steps to protect your home today before tragedy like this happens to you. Wildfires happen. Be ready. Cook Inlet Tug and Barge is a marine transportation company specializing in harbor services with a primary marketing focus on the Port of Anchorage, providing their customers with quality-based service specifically tailored to their needs. The National Weather Service. Hello again, everyone. Thanks for joining us for Monday's show. Yesterday, we had a uh, pretty good system here. A lot of clouds, rain moving across the southeast coast, uh, circulation right in through here, and several bands continuing to redevelop and move on to the east. Uh, areas of thunderstorms over the interior with a fair amount of sunshine, at least early on. A lot of temperatures rise in the mid 70s. A system out here along the coast bringing uh, cooler, damper uh, weather in slowly into that part of the uh, state here and also pushing to the south a little bit there. And then the next system out here over the Aleutians, we'll see uh, today, uh, came right on in, brought some wind and rain into the Shimia area, gusts 33 miles an hour this afternoon, good enough for small craft advisories, but uh, not for gales. And that'll be uh, slipping eastward here overnight tonight and begin to bring some rain into ADAC this evening and into the entire central Aleutian area tomorrow, but uh, could see some Southeast winds tomorrow night uh, up to 25 knots there for the central Aleutians, and that's about it. Today we have this uh, upper level low edging eastward here, and that's pushed this boundary right into the uh, Cook Inlet area. It's had some pretty good rainfall along the western Alaska range, and actually areas of rain or showers all the way back uh, out into the northern Bering Sea and then extending northward there. But the uh, heavier amounts actually with the thunderstorms that developed over the interior, most of a concentration was occurring right up uh, through that area from the northwest Canada area right up toward Arctic Village and Eastern Brooks Range. In fact, a couple of strikes or at least one just northwest of Barter Island, Kaktovik. Well, at the same time, they were reporting light snow, temperatures right near freezing, a lot of fog and low clouds that uh, covered much of the Arctic coast there. Areas of rain here over the northwest part of the state reported at Kivalina, back toward Ambler, and uh, thunderstorm in Indian Mountain, and one just uh, west of Anatovic, and some pretty good showers developing this afternoon up in the Susitna Valley around Talkeetna. And we'll see uh, this system down here, that's gonna move on into the south across the Queen Charlotte Islands, while showers today are on the moderate side in some areas there, but they're beginning to taper off this afternoon. You see a few breaks now off the coast. So this trough will, <coughs> excuse me, push eastward. Showers will continue to decrease through tonight. Maybe a little more sunshine tomorrow in that area. Scattered showers around the Wrangell Mountains up into the uh, Tanana Valley areas. But of course, the most extensive area of the thunderstorms was up along that trough axis up to the north and northeast and a little more stable conditions, but still a lot of showers and moisture here along this trough and then up on the western side of that trough to the north. Still a surface reflection of the upper level low over the Yukon Delta and uh, a lot of moisture, low clouds, fog and drizzle all along the coastline and inland a fair rate ways there. A few breaks over Bristol Bay and also uh, pretty nice there on the uh, Pacific side south of the Alaska Peninsula and Aleutians. Uh, a lot more cloudiness so up to the north with areas of fog but winds really light through this area until you get out to that system which tonight will push eastward and again, bring, probably bring some rain into ADAC late tonight and those southwest winds kicking up maybe 10 to 20 miles an hour 
dropping off back to the west and still some bands of moisture bringing the uh, damp conditions or continuing them all across the southwest interior. Mostly cloudy here to cloudy over the uh, Bristol Bay area with uh, light onshore flow there, keeping it cool and banking whatever low clouds are out there over the bay right up to the coastline. Look for occasional showers here, south central Alaska, mostly cloudy skies, isolated thunderstorms this evening, it's the Sitna Valley, maybe the Talkeetna Mountains, only showers to the south down into the Chugach, and then scattered showers, isolated thunderstorms from the Wrangles up into the eastern Alaska range, and uh, kind of a widespread shower condition there with mostly cloudy skies tonight all the way up to the, uh, well, all the way to the Arctic coast, and that'll extend all the way down to Point Hope and Cape Lisburn with moisture in the form of uh, drizzle, snow, or in fog, or one of the three there, but amounts would ever fall will be quite light. The heavier precipitation will be here with the uh, thunderstorms and showers in the interior, and less of that going on down over the southeast coast. That main upper trough now kicking through, but still a lot of moisture out here over the Gulf. Uh, kind of some very weak uh, troughs out here, barely even show up, but uh, that's gonna keep it cloudy, maybe even marginal VFR, mainly along the coastline there. No change out here over the Bering Sea areas of the peninsula, eastern Aleutians, light winds, mostly cloudy, areas of fog, and then tomorrow uh, a lot of moisture in association with this warm front uh, and the southwest flow that's pulling the moisture northeastward ahead of the front there, ahead of the cold front. That'll bring kind of an IFR kind of day into the Alaska Peninsula with fog and drizzle back to the eastern Aleutians, Unalaska, Nikolsky, and then rain, a uh, shot of solid rain as that front comes through the uh, Atka area with showers from Adak back to Shimia. And it looks like tomorrow night as this low center slides up into the Bering Sea, you'll probably see some small craft advisories there for the eastern Aleutians, 25 knot winds, and that's about it there. And then they drop back down to the 15 to 20 knot range on Wednesday. Otherwise, the interior, lots of uh, scattered thunderstorm activity around again, possibly as far south, the Copper River Basin again, uh, Denali Park areas to the west and up into the north, but again, the most concentrated area will be along and north of this trough axis and then back into northwest Canada and then on down east of the southeast coast there. Should be a uh, dry day, partly sunny, at least in part here along the southeast coast, if that's possible, but definitely uh, the sun will start catching up with the showers there, and which will be few and far between by tomorrow afternoon. This area of moisture lurking off the coastline there uh, probably is going to edge its way eastward, especially as this ridge of high pressure builds up on Wednesday there. But then it may just uh, kind of graze the coastline for cloudy skies there. Best chance of sun will be over the inside water areas, Juneau, Wrangell, on down to Cloak. Look pretty good there with just the clouds here along the coast, maybe some fog and drizzle. Otherwise, scattered showers again should be a little drier over south central Alaska, maybe shower free over the Kenai Peninsula. Partly sunny skies possible there for Prince William Sound. More likely though, Southern Cook Inlet, Homer, Soldovia looking really good. Kodiak not bad, variable clouds kind of increasing, especially on the west side of the island as uh, moisture from that warm front and the southwest flow uh, push in. But the east side of the island should be pretty good throughout most of the day and dry. Periods of rain, fog or drizzle here all along the uh, southwest coast from about uh, Cape Ramonzoff, Cuscoquim Bay, and that'll extend back out toward the Pribilof Islands and down for some rain and uh, kind of a breeze, maybe 15, 20 miles per hour uh, there for the Alaska Peninsula areas. And that front just drags across the eastern Aleutians for kind of a cloudy, damp day in that area. And then the showers really scatter out to the west there and the winds very light from the west, maybe 10 to 15 knots. Up along the Arctic coast, high pressure off the coast there. Areas of low clouds and fog continue, but the winds will remain quite light there and uh, five to 10 miles an hour here coming around the, uh, around those uh, uh, Point Hope area and then turning to the west as it blows in toward Kotzebue Sound and into the valleys. But uh, low clouds and fog, light winds over the Norton Sound area as well as the Seward Peninsula. And again, the thunderstorms up here breaking out over the Brooks Range areas and then down the eastern border. Pretty isolated and scattered showers, maybe a tad more numerous here over the western Alaska Range area. Temperatures this afternoon over the southeast coast, uh, mid to upper 50s, 57 there at uh, both Sitka and Port Alexander. Two of the warmer locations, 54 and some showers at Yakutat, 52 Cordova and 54 over at Seward, uh, 48 
both at Kenai with some light rain and down at Homer, 53 in Anchorage, uh, 59 Talkeetna, and at the park entrance, 61 degrees there, as well as Golcana and McCarthy, 56 at Northway, 57 Delta, Fairbanks pushed up to 64 degrees, and Eagle down to 63 from the 70s they had over the weekend, 66 at Fort Yukon, cooling back into the mid to lower 50s there as you get over the Kobuk, or the Koyukuk Valley, the Kobuk Valley, you're down into the mid 40s, the Arctic Coast, uh, lower to mid 30s, milder on the west side, but not much, and then mid 30s extending all the way down to St. Lawrence Island, and Macoriuk just 39 degrees this afternoon, otherwise uh, 40s in over the deltas to Sleep Mute, 48 degrees. And out to the west, superb law of St. Paul, 48 degrees, a little cooler at St. George, 46 Adak, and a 41 at Shimia, 50 degrees at Atka, same thing at Unalaska, Nikolsky, 48, and not too bad over the peninsula here, lower to mid 50s. For the lows tonight, uh, 40s for the Panhandle, lower 50s for the Upper Yukon Valley area, otherwise 40s everywhere else here, all the way down to the coast to upper 30s over the southwest, upper 20s and lower 30s over the North Slope and Arctic coast. And the highs tomorrow, 60s to near 70 along the eastern border there, say around Eagle, maybe Fort Yukon, but uh, cooling off back to the west, barely making 50 degrees here along the uh, Cuscombe Valley areas, but McGrath should push up to 55 and then upper 40s to near 40 again out along the coast and near 50 for the peninsula. Upper 40s uh, there for the Aleutians and probably milder conditions, a little more clearing. Uh, Craig, Klawak, uh, maybe even Ketchikan and Wrangell could push up to 60 degrees or better, but cooler to the north. For uh, flying weather, areas of marginal VFR, possible uh, eastern Gulf of Alaska right up to the coastline tomorrow should be VFR over the inside waters and become VFR up to the passes with areas of marginal VFR along the north Gulf Coast into Prince William Sound. Uh, to start the day with probably some marginal conditions here on the central Alaska range and then by afternoon just persisting on the west side there uh, of the pass or of the uh, range and then along the west coast uh, lots of marginal VFR some of that working inland along the mountains there from the Kilbrook range but tending to pull back to the coast during the afternoon hours areas of IFR especially early on in the day there for the Arctic coast and locally the north slope with IFR back down to St. Lawrence Island and expect marginal VFR anywhere over the Bering Sea tomorrow in the eastern Aleutians and then IFR with that front from Atka all the way back to Shimia. And for passes, Anatovic, uh, VFR, either approach tomorrow, Adigan, uh, VFR, but uh, showers around. And for Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR forecast the entire day tomorrow. And same thing for Rainy, uh, Windy starting out marginal and then becoming VFR. Isabel, marginal becoming VFR and then Testa. Looks pretty good. Uh, VFR with a few showers. Antonita, VFR conditions. Portage could start out marginal and then become VFR, so really no problems for that pass. And Chilkoot and White could become marginal and then improve to VFR. For the uh, freezing levels now, that uh, warm air aloft we've seen kind of retreating back to the north and northwest there with the uh, chillier air coming in around the, b the bottom of that. Uh, with a westerly flow associated with the uh, upper low there coming in, kind of linking up here with the low that's slowly moving across the southeast coast there. So uh, again, temperatures uh, cooling off into the interior slowly, but kind of uh, holding on a little bit there. And that will trigger the afternoon thunderstorms with those higher temperatures. Icing threats, uh, maybe some mixed isolated rime icing scattered around mostly southern Alaska, east or west of the Copper River Basin. And there could be some stuff up there along the western Arctic coast, a little more widespread area of rime icing, below about 12,000 feet out over uh, the southwest Bering Sea and then advancing eastward with a front to about uh, possibly Atka, some of that moisture streaming up over the Perbolofs as well. Otherwise, uh, Bristol Bay, Kodiak, across the southeast coast, all icing free. There's this low slowly pushing eastward over the next couple of days. That's going to spread the cooler, cloudier, damper conditions eastward with it and eventually possibly into the central or east central interior, but the upper high holding back in this area and then the jet stream now either south of the South Panhandle or back here to the west. So definitely drying out, maybe a little bit more sun. 9,000 foot winds, good southwest flow coming right up into southern Alaska up to 25 knots. Westerlies at 30 knots across the peninsula. Very light winds there for the panhandle. Light winds 
through the western part along that trough axis in the west and not much stronger there over the northeast interior. South-southwest at about 25 to 40 knots there over the Aleutians and southern Bering Sea. 3,000 feet, much the same pattern, maybe up to 30 knots there in advance of that front across the eastern Aleutians, otherwise barely a breeze here coming across Bristol Bay and Kodiak Island, south to north, but only at about 10 knots or 5 to 15 knots over the eastern interior, and very light winds of 3,000 feet for the southeast coast. So no turbulence there, and uh, maybe some mechanical turbulence along the Aleutian Range in Alaska Peninsula. Uh, a little bit more widespread area of light to very isolated moderate chop here from uh, Unalaska all the way out to Shimia. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Harry Keeling, and on behalf of Alaska Public Media, and the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation, welcome to Hangar Flying. This evening our guest is a pilot with a really impressive resume. General Russ Handy is the commander of Alaskan Command, 11th Air Force, Alaska Region North American Air, Air Aerospace Defense Command, and Joint Task Force Alaska, which is part of Northern Command. In his Air Force career, the generals commanded a fighter squadron, two fighter wings, and had other significant staff positions around the world, including Iraq, Colorado, and Antarctica. From a flying position or perspective, he's a graduate of Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University and the USAF Fighter Weapons School, both places he later served as an instructor. General Handy is no stranger to Alaska, having commanded the 3rd Operations Group at Elmendorf. He's participated in numerous combat operations and flown many different types of aircraft, primarily the F-15 and now the F-22. General Handy, welcome to Hangar Flying. Thank you, Eric. General Handy, m m many of the Air Force and Navy fighter pilots don't have much, if any, experience in general aviation. But you not only graduated from Embry-Riddle, but later served as a CFI there. How did that experience influence your later Air Force career? I think it influenced my later Air Force career in a couple of ways. The, the first one uh, is sort of life-based, and maybe the second one is flying-based. Um, what I mean by the life-based is I remember when I got a pamphlet in the mail uh, from Embry-Riddle when I was still in high school and I was trying to figure out what I might do with my life, and it had a picture of an airplane. And I didn't have a lot of flying experience. I'd flown uh, in general aviation aircraft a few times, never on a jet aircraft, never on an airliner until the day I went to school uh, in Florida. Um, and I thought, boy, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, went to my parents and showed them that, and they looked at the prices of Embry-Riddle, and they thought I was out of my mind. And, <laughs> and so one thing led to another and, and ended up there with uh, a whole lot of student loans um, and working not only as an instructor, but uh, three or four other jobs, including pumping gas and working on aircraft at the FBO and graveyard shift at the convenience store. and and any kind of flying job I could get right seat for no money at all just for flying time and so you know did that for a little while and, and frankly uh, uh, got married at a, an, at a young age my wife and I were both sort of struggling through that together and we we learned a lot about life and a lot about how to uh, how to make a living um, a lot about aviation at sort of the grassroots uh, level um, from a flying perspective though when I went to work for Embry-Riddle the first course they had me teaching was in the simulator. At the time, they were the Singer GAT trainers with a little plastic seat. You know, we used to say we had rivet butt because we sat on that little plastic seat with the metal rivets and, you know, taught in that for a while. And then the first flying course they gave me as a brand new CFI, uh, still in college, was pre-solo. A whole lot of students, most kids really, about 50% of them had no business flying, but they thought, boy, like me with the pamphlet, wouldn't that be cool? Uh, their parents, uh, some of them had a lot of money and said, well, that's a good idea. Got to go down there and try that flying thing. So we had a very high washout rate, but, but also, uh, you know, you had to be on your toes. And so even though I was only teaching, at, you know, in a Cessna 172, it certainly wasn't an F-22 or an F-15, boy, I learned a lot about flying and a lot about survival. Uh, uh, as, as they say, you really don't learn about flying until you teach. And so uh, that taught me, at, you know, at a very early age, that what level you really had to get to to be able to understand that aircraft and understand the operation of it uh, at, a, at a very intense level. Again, it, it, was, it was out of survival, uh, but, it, but it sure taught me a lot about aviation and a lot about how to, how to instruct. <clears throat> Our audience, sir, as you know, are 
pilots and aviation enthusiasts around the state. Most of them fly small, single engine air aircraft. Um, one of the things we stress as instructors and pilots is the importance of continual training. And you've had some pretty significant flying and instructor experiences, and, and uh, one that, that I think is particularly impressive, and certainly for any Air Force pilot would, would recognize, is your opportunity to go to the USAF Fighter Weapons School. That really is the capstone of pilot education. Um, and I, I think if you had your flight suit on, you'd have a, a gray patch on your shoulder. Um, we're almost out of time. I'm going to get you back a couple of times because there's a, a number of things I want to talk about, but um, about a minute left. Your thoughts as a patch wearer? The Weapons School is an amazing institution, and it's, and it's gotten better and better as every year has passed. I like to say I, I could never compete to and even get accepted there against the, the students that, that go through that course now. It's incredible. Uh, very much teaching above just the level of an, of an instructor, of a we weapons instructor, but at the problem-solving level. So we, we teach students at the PhD level within their aircraft, within their weapon system, but at the master's level from a big-picture problem-solving environment. So they graduate from there, not just being able to build their airplane or their radar or their missile, but, but how, to, how to employ aircraft together and how to understand all of the weapon systems and their employment together. Uh, we, we put a lot of pressure on students. When I went through, there was a lot of pressure on me. And so again, all the very basics of flying you know, had, to, had to almost be second nature so that you could focus on, on that higher level. Uh, so I think just understanding how to prioritize, understanding where to put your efforts, because we always give them sort of too much to do and too much to think about, uh, teaches you an amazing amount about problem solving and about prioritization. Let's pick it up there next time. If I can get you back on, uh, I think we've got some other things I'd like to ask you. You bet. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed tonight's program. We're going to get General Handy on uh, next time, and we'll pick it up with some other lessons, maybe some applications from his experiences at Fighter Weapons School. Until then, fly safe. Welcome back. Well, looking at the sea ice chart, uh, about St. Lawrence Island here, all the way up to Tin City eastward, all ice-free across Norton Sound, and a uh, fair amount, <coughs> excuse me, opening up into the Chukchi Sea, this area here, about 30% sea ice, and that's about it. And onto the uh, coastal forecast, light and variable winds up here on the north coast, west, southwest, at about 10 knots along the coast, 5 to 15 knot westerlies to maybe southerlies at 20 knots in Lincoln on Glacier Bay. And light winds continue uh, as well on Wednesday. Still those southerly winds possible there for Lynn Canal in the afternoon. Otherwise, mostly west, 5 to 15 over the uh, inside waters and a light northwest breeze along the coast. And uh, for the uh, North Gulf Coast, uh, Middleton Island, all the way down to Kodiak here, or Fognac Island, uh, 10 to 15 knots westerly still possible there towards Sitkanak in that area southwest right up the inlet but only at 10 to 15 knots and then the outlook for uh, Wednesday southwesterly winds just about everywhere now maybe a little more southerly in areas of Cook Inlet up to 15 knots there especially as you come through the forelands but uh, southwesterlies either side of Kodiak Island Shelikoff Strait right up into Prince William Sound uh, again but quite light 5 to 10 knots there with uh, pretty slight seas and for Bristol Bay tomorrow, look for west-southwest at about 20 at times uh, possible. Otherwise, light and variable down the peninsula to Cape Sarachev. And uh, very light winds also on the Pacific side of the peninsula here. And getting a little more variable to northwest as you get up towards uh, Shelikoff Strait. And then a little bit of an increase here from the southwest there from Sitkanak all the way down to Cape Sarachev. 20 knot winds, southwest 15 here on the Bering Sea side. Lighter winds now from the southwest for Bristol Bay. And out in the Aleutians of Fox Islands, mostly southerly tomorrow, but uh, quite light. 20 knot winds here, 20 to 25 knots possible for the central Aleutians tomorrow. More than likely, though, uh, you'll see some 25 knot winds tomorrow evening as the main low center, which uh, tomorrow is right over the western Aleutians, pulls up into the north a little bit there. Then they'll drop back Wednesday into the 20 knot range from the southwest all the way up across the Fox Islands, and then they drop back to 15 knots. Really light winds out to the west. 
And for the uh, Bering Sea, south winds at 10. For the Perbaloff, southeasterlies here for the St. Matthew Island area. And then along the west coast, southwest coast, uh, 10 to 15 knot westerlies. Light variable winds with uh, slight seas for the St. Lawrence Island area. Call it southeast at about 10 for that area on Wednesday. And that looks good all the way down to Nunavak Island. And then south of there, south at 15 for the direction and speed. The Perbaloff's not much different. Easterlies at 15 for St. Matthew Island. And up along the Arctic coast, northeast winds at about 5 tomorrow, picking up to 15 knots on the east side. Otherwise, really light winds here, kind of uh, just paralleling the coastline, becoming more westerly. And actually, you could be looking at 10 to 20 knot winds uh, across Kotzebue Sound and toward uh, Selawik and the Selawik Valley there during the afternoon hours. But that'll probably not be the case for uh, Wednesday, just really light winds continuing out here as well as along the Arctic coast. So a uh, few big changes or a few changes at all in the wind flow up there over the next couple of days. For tonight, there will be some uh, quite an area of moisture up there, resulting in the low clouds, fog, flurries, or drizzle, extending all the way back to Kaktovik. Thunderstorms diminishing this evening, and especially after midnight over the eastern interior. They could extend all the way into the Susitna Valley this evening, possibly in toward the northern Wrangell Mountain areas, but a lot of clouds, and light rain or drizzle, showers, fog along the coast here back to the west and over Bristol Bay, areas of fog and low clouds. Showers diminishing over the southeast coast. We can't quite shake them, but look for more clearing tomorrow. A repeat of today over the interior of the thunderstorms, especially up here in the north, and that next front spreading moisture into the Pribilofs and the front crossing the uh, central Aleutians pushes in toward the eastern Aleutians on Wednesday. Rain up into the southwest interior, showers, and thunderstorms over the inland areas again and possible sunshine for the panhandle. Have a great evening. Thanks for joining us. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.